Hello everyone. Today in the session, I will uh, talk on the concept of endocrine system. And uh, particularly, I will emphasize, emphasize this particular concept with reference to 8th ICC syllabus. And uh, in the starting, uh, I would like to add a note on uh, endocrine system. Endocrine system is a system of glands that is responsible for the secretion of hormones. And uh, endocrine system is also known as a system of ductless glands. That is, I want to say the various glands which are there in the endocrine system, they are without the ducts. And uh, within the human body, we can find out the two major kind of the glands. One are known as exocrine glands. The glands with the ducts, their secretions are not called as a hormones. Keep in mind. The secretions of exocrine glands are not referred with the title hormones. The secretions of exocrine glands may be referred with the name such as saliva, if they are the secretions of salivary glands. They are referred with the name of uh, tears, if they are the secretions of tear glands or lacrimal glands. They may be referred with the name of bile, if they are the secretions of liver or pancreas, or they may be simply referred with the name of enzymes. I would want to say the secretions of exocrine gland may be diverse with respect to their function and uh, secretion. They may be referred as saliva or tears or bile or mucus or enzymes or intestinal secretions. And uh, the exocrine glands are definitely having the ducts. We can uh, give the example in this case. The slavery glands, they are having the ducts. They open with the help of the ducts in our oral cavity. Likewise, the skin glands, I want to say the oil glands as well as the sweat glands which are found in our skin. They are also a category of exocrine gland. Whereas endocrine glands is made up of a system of glands which are without ducts. And therefore their secretions, they are carried with the help of these ducts to the target site or to the target organ. That is, their secretions, they are directly added to the bloodstream and the blood carries their secretion up to the target site or to the target organ because they are without ducts. And uh, primarily, the various kinds of endocrine glands in the human body, they are hypothalamus, pituitary and pineal in the region of head or brain. Then, thyroid and parathyroid in the region of neck, then the thymus gland in the chest, then uh, we can say suprarenal gland or adrenal gland over the surface of kidney in the area of abdomen and pancreas and in the pelvic area there are found the gonads that is the testes and ovaries. It means that the endocrine family of human body is diverse in its functioning as well as its uh, Physio physiological activities that is we want to say these uh, glands which are found in the different parts of the body they are responsible for secretion of various hormones and these hormones are responsible for controlling a definite physiological activity within the human body and uh, first of all the most important kind of uh, endocrine gland within our body it is a pituitary. The pituitary gland is commonly known as a master endocrine gland as it controls the other endocrine glands which are found in the human body such as pineal gland, thyroid gland, parathyroid gland, pancreas, etc. All of these uh, they are under the direct control of pituitary. Pituitary secretes the hormones which are referred with the name of trophic hormones. Any hormone which is produced by the pituitary gland ends in the suffix trophin or trophic. For example, there is a hormone which is referred to the name of ACTH. The ACTH hormone is produced by the pituitary gland and it is referred with the title adrenocorticotrophin hormone. Kindly note, in ACTH, the letter T denotes trophic or trophin. So this indicates that this is a secretion of pituitary gland. Likewise, if we say GNH or gonadotrophin hormones, these are also produced by the pituitary. 
but keep in mind the pituitary is uh, further under the control of hypothalamus hypothalamus controls the pituitary gland and pituitary gland controls the other glands which are found within the human body the secretions of hypothalamus they are referred with the name of releasing hormones their only and only target site is a pituitary and pituitary gland secretes the hormones which are called as a trophic hormone after the reactivation and uh, these hormones may regulate the functioning of other endocrine glands within the body like pineal gland or thyroid gland or adrenal gland or some exit then the various secretions of endocrine glands they are commonly referred with the name of hormones and a hormone is regarded as a chemical transmitter or it is regarded as a chemical messenger it is released by the endocrine glands into the blood stream and then it is carried with the help of the blood to the target site or to the target organ because the endocrine gland is not having its own ducts therefore i want to say the blood when flows in the blood vessels it may carry these chemical messengers along with and these chemical messengers they are given to the target site or to the target organ and thereafter those organs they get activated and they start showing their activity hormones are just like the letters which are posted by a person with the name of some other person on the title and uh, target cell or target site where the hormones get perceived these cells are having the special kind of the receptors over them and with the help of these receptors the hormones they are capable to affect a particular category of gland or cell or tissue within the body then you may see the pituitary gland primarily which is known as a master endocrine gland this is the smallest gland of the human body and uh, it is present in our brain especially in the diencephalon part of the brain diencephalon is a part of the four brain area of the human brain i hope so you are well aware of the three different parts of the human brain human brain is uh, divisible into the three important regions forebrain midbrain and hindbrain and in the forebrain area there are found the three important areas which are referred to the name of uh, olfactory lobes cerebrum and diencephalon the diencephalon area is having a small concavity in it which is referred to the name of cella tarsica and within the cella tarsica there is a found the pituitary gland furthermore the pituitary gland is predominantly having the two important lobes one is referred with the name of anterior lobe and second is the posterior lobe keep in mind anterior lobe area which is lying adjacent to the posterior lobe that may be referred in the certain literature and books with the name as intermediate lobe anterior lobe is the largest lobe of the pituitary gland whereas the adjoining area which is referred may which may be referred to the name of intermediate lobe that is known as the smallest part of the pituitary gland maximum types of hormones of pituitary they are secreted by the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland whereas the middle lobe or intermediate lobe secretes only a single hormone and the posterior lobe it secretes the two hormones keep in mind anterior lobe secretes maximum type of pituitary hormones middle lobe is uh, secreting only a single hormone whereas the posterior lobe is responsible for secretion of two hormones only anterior lobe is connected with the hypothalamus as i have already mentioned in the lecture pituitary is under the control of hypothalamus 
and therefore the hypothalamus is producing the some important kind of releasing hormones which may affect the pituitary gland and uh, the communication is through the blood vessels the blood vessel will maintain the communication between the anterior lobe as well as the hypothalamus whereas the posterior lobe is connected with the hypothalamus by means of nerve fibers this is an important very important difference in the anterior as well as the posterior lobe of pituitary glands with reference to their connection with the hypothalamus anterior lobe is connected with the hypothalamus by means of blood vessels posterior lobe is connected with the hypothalamus by means of nerve fibers and uh, the various categories of the hormones which are produced by the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland you may see in the diagram this is a pituitary gland it is connected with the hypothalamus and superficially there is a connecting stalk between the two and that connecting stalk is referred to the name of pituitary stalk or infundibulum and uh, this stalk when anatomically examined it is having the blood vessels as well as the nerve fibers the blood vessels they are connecting the hypothalamus with the anterior lobe whereas the nerve fibers they are connecting the hypothalamus with the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland and uh, the hormones of uh, anterior lobe they are one is acth adrenocorticotrophin hormone second is a gh or growth hormone then the third one is prh or prolactin releasing hormone then tsh or thyroid stimulating hormone then gonadotrophins like fsh and lh which are referred to the name of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone as well the acth hormone is produced by the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland when the pituitary gland it is stimulated with the help of arh secreted by the hypothalamus arh is known as adrenocorticotrophin releasing hormone adrenocorticotrophin releasing hormone this adrenocorticotrophin releasing hormone which is produced by the hypothalamus activates the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland and pituitary gland thereafter start producing the acth hormone or adrenocorticotrophin hormone this adrenocorticotrophin hormone activates the adrenal cortex what is adrenal cortex it is the outer portion of adrenal gland adrenal gland is present over the surface of the kidney it means that adrenal gland is uh, obeying the anterior lobe of the pituitary and anterior lobe of the pituitary is obeying the order of hypothalamus and uh, the adrenal cortex when get activated with the help of acth it start producing its own hormones which are collectively referred to the name of corticocoids and these corticocoids they are further having the three sub categories one is referred to the name of glucocorticoids which are responsible for glucose metabolism second set of hormones produced by the adrenal cortex they are referred to the name of mineral corticoids they are responsible for the balance of sodium and potassium in the blood plasma and the third category of hormones produced by adrenal cortex they are referred as gonadocorticoids or sexocorticoids and these are responsible for development of secondary sex characters in the male as well as the female it means that adrenal cortex is responsible for regulating or controlling the bodily functions when it is activated by acth and uh, this acth is uh, produced by the anterior lobe of the pituitary when it is uh, stimulated by arh produced by hypothalamus then the second important uh, category of hormones produced by the anterior lobe it is referred to the name of gh or growth hormone growth hormone is technically referred to the name of somatotrophin keep in mind i again stressing upon the identification of the hormone produced by the pituitary every hormone produced by the pituitary is having the suffix trophin growth hormone is known as somatotrophin so it means that it is a secretion of anterior pituitary gland and this growth hormone when it is produced 
it is produced into the blood and then it goes with the help of the blood to the various cells and tissues of the body and it activates those cells and tissues and resulting in their cell division or growth. It means that primarily this hormone is secreted up to the adolescent age. In the adult age, the secretion of this hormone stops. So that's why there is an increase in the height only up to the adolescent stage and after that the height stops growing because uh, there is non-secretion of GH by anterior of the pituitary gland after the acquisition of adult stage. Then uh, the third important category of the hormone produced by the anterior lobe is known as TSH. It is known as thyroid stimulating hormone. Technically it is also known as thyotrophin hormone. This hormone is produced by the pituitary when it is activated by the hypothalamus and uh, hypothalamus activates the pituitary by the secretion of TRH, thyotrophin releasing hormone. TRH activates the pituitary and thereafter uh, pituitary start producing TSH, TSH goes via blood with the, and uh, activate the thyroid gland and thereafter the thyroid gland start producing its uh, secretions of chemical messengers. And uh, the hormone which is produced by the middle lobe of pituitary gland that is known as a MSH single hormone. This is known as a melanocyte stimulating hormone and uh, this is responsible for the development of melanin pigment in the skin. The hormone which are produced by the posterior of the pituitary gland, they are two in number. One is referred to the name of ADH or antidiuretic hormone and second is wrapped with the name of oxytocin which is also known as a pitocin hormone. The ADH hormone or antidiuretic hormone it is responsible for reabsorption of the water in the kidney nephrons. I want to say when the kidneys they are engaged in the process of urine formation then the urine may carry excess amount of water and this excess amount of the water it is absorbed by the nephrons to the kidney it is due to the production of the ADH hormone. The ADH hormone deficiency may lead to the production of dilute urine and it may lead to fluid imbalances in the body. And even if there is a deficiency of ADH, a disease may take place. That particular disease is referred to the name of diabetes inspidious. That is not uh, referred to the name of diabetes mellitus. It is particularly diabetes inspidious. I want to say when uh, excess of water, it is not uh, reabsorbed by, it is not reabsorbed by uh, the kidney nephrons from the urine, then the blood becomes concentrated and the level of the glucose rises and it is connected with the low secretions of ADH or it is connected with the hypo secretion of ADH heart. Then another hormone which is produced uh, by posterior of the pituitary gland that is referred to the name of oxytocin. It is known as a pituitary hormone. It is also commonly known as a birth hormone or it is also referred to the name of milk ejaculating hormone. This hormone is produced by the posterior of the pituitary gland and particularly it is produced at the termination of pregnancy. I want to say when there is a last stage of pregnancy then the level of this hormone increases in the bloodstream. And this hormone goes to the blood and finally it causes the stimulation of contraction of uterine muscles as well as the smooth muscle fibers of the mammary glands. And when the uterine muscles undergo contractions, then ear contractions, vigorous contractions, they are referred to the name of labor pains and finally it helps in the process of part irritation or childbirth. And likewise, uh, the smooth muscle cells of uh, the mammary glands they undergo contraction due to the stimulation by the oxytocin or pituitary hormone and this oxytocin hormone is uh, responsible for milk ejaculation after the childbirth. So it means that both of these two hormones ADH as well as oxytocin they are playing one important role in the human physiology particularly uh, in the concentration of urine or reabsorption of the water from the urine and in the process of childbirth uh, due to the stimulation of muscle fibers. Then further you may see uh, there may be some deficiencies which are uh, uh, associated with the pituitary gland secretions. 
For example, if the pituitary gland is secreting lesser amount of hormone, which is referred to the name of growth hormone or somatotrophin, then the growth of the body may get limitized and the height of the person may not further increase. This may lead to a disease which is called as dwarfism. You may see uh, on the extreme right corner, there is a picture of a dwarf person and it is not due to some other factor. It is due to the lesser secretion of growth hormone. Likewise, if the growth hormone is secreted in more amounts, over secretion of the growth hormone may lead to gigantism. What is gigantism? That is the height grows abnormally and uh, there is increase in the size of skull bones as well as the bones of the limbs. So it means that uh, under secretion and over secretion of each and every hormone is harmful for the body. It may disturb, uh, it may disturb, uh, causes the disturbances in the human physiological mechanisms. Then this is uh, the adrenal gland you may see in the picture and it is activated by the ACTH hormone. I have already told you the ACTH is produced by anterior of the pituitary gland. The thyroid gland it is given below and uh, the thyroid gland is uh, activated due to the secretion of TSH hormone by the pituitary gland. Then uh, one another important hormone produced by the anterior of the pituitary gland that is referred to the name of gonadotrophin. And there are the two important kind of the gonadotrophins. One is referred to the name of FSH and second is known as LH. FSH is also known as follicle stimulating hormone and LH is known as luteinizing hormone. Follicle stimulating hormone is responsible for development of ovarian follicles within the ovary or female gonads and uh, it is also responsible for formation of the sperms in the human males, especially in the testicular region. And LH it is responsible for ovulation process that is liberation of ovum from the ovary on the 14th day of the menstrual cycle. Now you may see in this picture, this is uh, the hypothetical diagram of the ovary and the ovarian follicles are ejecting out the egg on the 14th day of the menstrual cycle. It is regulated through the secretion of LH hormone or luteinizing hormone. Then I have already told you that is uh, another important hormone produced by the pituitary gland that is also known as prolactin hormone. This is the hormone which is responsible for milk production within the mammary glands. Milk production within the mammary glands. Keep in mind oxytocin is responsible for milk ejaculation but prolactin is responsible for the synthesis of milk in the mammary glands. Then the hormone which is uh, produced by interior lobe which may be also referred as a hormone of intermediate lobe that is the MSH hormone or melanocyte stimulating hormone. It is responsible for the formation of the melanin pigment in the skin. And we know that the melanin is responsible for giving a particular coloration to the human skin. It also acts as a sunscreen against the UV light. And the posterior lobe is having the two hormones. One is the ADH responsible for reabsorption of the water by the kidneys, nephrons. And the second is oxytocin which is responsible for uh, stimulation of contraction of uterine muscles during the last stage of pregnancy as well as milk ejaculation after the childbirth. Then the next important gland which is found in the brain area that is known as a pineal gland. The pineal gland is named so because it is pine cone shaped gland. That's what is called as a pineal gland. It is located in the region of the diencephalon that is a forebrain area. And uh, it is approximately 1 centimeter in diameter. Keep in mind, it is the second smallest endocrine gland in the human body. The first smallest endocrine gland is pituitary gland. And pineal gland is the second smallest endocrine gland. I want to say it is quite bigger than the pituitary, but it is smaller than the other endocrine glands which are found within the human body. And this pineal gland secretes only a single hormone. And that single hormone is referred to the name of melatonin hormone. The melatonin hormone is also known as the hormones of biological rhythms 
or circadian rhythms. I want to say the sleep wake cycle or the daily activities for the 24 hours, they are well regulated by the melatonin hormone. If a person takes the breakfast at uh, 10 o'clock, the hunger pangs they are generated almost at the same time or uh, let's say uh, plus minus half an hour of the 10 o'clock. And uh, likewise, uh, if a person takes the breakfast at 7 a.m., then the hunger pangs will be generated near about at that particular time. It means that such kind of uh, activities at the particular time, they are well regulated by the melatonin. That's why it is also known as uh, biological rhythm hormone. It is also known as a hormone controlling the circadian rhythms. And it is also responsible for inducing the sleep. I want to say when more amount of melatonin get collected in the blood, then the sleep signal is introduced in the body. And uh, during the sleep, the level of this hormone started decreasing. And when uh, the level of melatonin becomes minimum, then the awake signal is created in the body. It means that the sleep wake cycle, it is regulated by the melatonin hormone. Then another important hormone which is secreted up to the minor extent by the pineal gland that is known as a serotonin. Serotonin is also referred as a neurotransmitter that regulates the intestinal movements as well as affects our appetite, mood, sleep, anger as well as the metabolism. Then the next important kind of endocrine gland in the human body is the thyroid gland. Keep in mind the thyroid is the largest endocrine gland in the human body. It is the largest endocrine gland in the human body. The largest gland in the human body is the liver. But the largest endocrine gland is the thyroid. Thyroid gland is present in the area of the neck and it is having the two lobes and these two lobes they are connected by means of a neck like area, a bridge like area and this uh, bridge like area it is referred with the name of isthmus. And uh, the thyroid gland is uh, having the thyroid follicles inside it. These uh, thyroid follicles are encoded with the thyroxine hormone or hormones of the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland produced uh, three important hormones. One is referred to the name of T4 hormone or thyroxine. Second is known as a T3 hormone or triiodothionine hormone. And the third one is known as a calcitonin. T4 or thyroxine hormone, which is also chemically referred to the name as tetraidothionine hormone, is uh, chemically similar to T3 produced by the thyroid gland. But only one difference is there. T3 is uh, having the three iodine atoms in it, whereas the T4 is uh, having the four iodine atoms in it. This is a major difference between the T4 and T3. And T3 is produced in the lesser amount, whereas a T4 is produced in the large amounts by the thyroid gland. But chemically, T3 is much more faster in action in comparison to T4 or thyroxine. And the T3 is generated after the deletion of one iodine atom from the T4. I want to say, when the thyroxine has to show its a fast action, the T4 gets converted into the T3 by the deletion of one iodine atom from it. And uh, furthermore, the thyroxine as well as a T3 hormones, T4 as well as a T3 hormones, they are responsible for controlling the BMR rate. That is a basal metabolic rate. Furthermore, it is also responsible for having the normal reproductive cycles, especially in the female, the menstrual cycle is well regulated by the thyroxine. And those females which are suffering from hyposecretion of thyroxine, they may show absence of menstruation or they may show missed menstruation. It means that the thyroxine hormone is having somewhat role in the physiology of the reproductive uh, ducts as well as 
<coughs> reproductive organs in the human body. Then the third important function which has been uh, justified for the thyroxin hormone in the other animals especially in the frog it is responsible for metamorphosis of the tadpole larva into the adult frog. That is I want to say if the thyroid gland of tadpole larva is removed then it fails to metamorphose into the adult frog. It means that in case of lower animals like frog and uh, those ones which shows the metamorphosis, the thyroid gland is playing the key role in the metamorphosis process. Then the third important hormone produced by the th uh, thyroid gland that is called as a calcitonin hormone. The calcitonin hormone is responsible for calcium balance. Keep in mind the calcitonin hormone is produced by the thyroid gland only when the blood calcium ion concentration is higher. That is you want to say when the calcium ion concentration in the blood is higher than the calcitonin hormone is produced by the thyroid gland. And this calcitonin hormone thereafter slows down the calcium ion production within the blood and thereby reducing the calcium ion concentration within the bloodstream. And how it is possible? That is the blood starts decreasing the rate of absorption of calcium <coughs> sorry, from, from the intestine and uh, from the urine nephrons, I want to say from the kidney nephrons, the calcium it is uh, stop absorbing by the blood, so uh, thereby maintaining the low concentration level of calcium within the blood plasma. And the uh, hyposecretion of T3 and T4, that is a thyroxine hormone, may lead to the disorders which are referred to the name of keratinism, maxedema, and Hashimoto disease. Whereas the hyposecretion of uh, thyroxine hormones may lead to the grave disease, exopathalmic goiter, and based on disease. In the keratinism or maxedema, keratinism is reported in the children, whereas the maxedema is reported in the adults. In both of these two kinds of hyposecretory disorder of the thyroid gland, especially with reference to the thyroxine hormone, the blood pressure decreases, the heartbeat rate decreases because there is a lesser secretion of thyroid hormones by the thyroid gland. And reverse is true in case of graft disease, in case of exophthalmic goiter, when the thyroxine hormone is produced in a higher concentration. It means that there is a, a high uh, rate of heart beating is there, high blood pressure may be there and likewise there is accumulation of subcutaneous fat deposits in the adult one and the disease is referred to the name of Graves disease. Goiter is caused due to the deficiency of iodine and hypersecretion of T3 as well as T4 hormones. <clears throat> then another important gland which is found in the human body endocrine gland that is referred to the name of uh, parathyroid gland. Parathyroid gland is associated with the thyroid that so it is referred to the name of parathyroid. And parathyroid gland is comprised of four different lobes which are associated in the thyroid gland lobes one in the upper area and one is the lower area that is in the each thyroid lobe there we are having the two parathyroid gland one in the upper region and one in the lower region. And uh, this parathyroid gland which is comprised of four different lobes associated with the thyroid gland secretes a single hormone which is called as a parathormone. This parathormone is uh, responsible for calcium balance as well as the phosphorus balance within the blood plasma and how this hormone is produced when the blood calcium level is low. And by its physiological actions, it increases the concentration of calcium ion within the blood plasma. That is, the calcitonin hormone produced by the thyroid gland and parathormone produced by the parathyroid gland. These two hormones, they balance the <coughs> calcium level within the bloodstream. Calcitonin is produced when the blood plasma calcium ion concentration is high 
and uh, PTH or parathormone is produced when the blood calcium ion concentration is low. PTH increases the concentration of calcium ion within the blood plasma whereas the calcitonin decreases the concentration of calcium ion in the blood thereby balancing the calcium ion concentration within the human blood plasma. And then the next important kind of gland which is uh, found in the human body endocrine gland that is the pancreas. Keep in mind pancreas is both uh, the organ of digestive system as well as of endocrine system. It is having the ducts as well as it is having the portion without ducts. The portion of the pancreas with the ducts secretes the enzymes which help in the process of digestion of food material whereas the endocrine portion of the pancreas secretes some hormones. The endocrine portion of the pancreas is referred with the name of island of Langerhans and a gland which is functioning as both exocrine as, as well as endocrine that may be referred with the name of heterocrine gland. So this is uh, the heterocrine gland in the human body and endocrine secretion of uh, the pancreas are produced by island of Langerhans. Island of Langerhans is having <coughs> four different categories of cells. One are called as alpha cells, second are known as beta cells, then the third one are known as delta cells and the fourth one are known as PP cells. There is more number of beta cell in comparison to any other category of cells in the island of Langerhans. Beta cell secretes one of the prominent hormone which is called as insulin hormone. The insulin hormone is responsible for balance of blood glucose level. I want to say excess amount of glucose which is reported in the blood after the meal that is converted into the glycogen with the activity of insulin hormone. And the deficiency of insulin hormone results into a disease which is called as diabetes mellitus or increase in the blood sugar. Then alpha cell secretes uh, the hormone which is called as a glucagon and uh, it is uh, doing the reverse action as done by the insulin. The insulin converts the glucose into glycogen but the glucagon converts the glycogen back into the glucose. It means that uh, this hormone glucagon is produced during the stress condition and when there is a deficiency of glucose in the blood, balancing the level of the glucose within the blood for the normal functioning or activities of the human body. Then the delta cells <coughs> secretes one important hormone which is called as a somatostatin and in addition to that it also suppresses the release of glucagon and insulin by the alpha cells as well as by the beta cells. Somatostatin which is produced by the delta cell, it is also known as growth inhibiting hormone. Then the next important uh, gland which is uh, found in the human body that is known as adrenal gland. Adrenal gland is named so because it is present over the upper surface of each kidney. There is a found a pair of adrenal glands in the human body. And the adrenal gland is having the two important regions anatomically. The anterior portion of uh, adrenal gland is known as medulla or adrenal medulla whereas the outer portion is known as the adrenal cortex. The medulla secretes different sets of hormone in comparison to adrenal cortex. The hormone produced by the adrenal cortex they are referred with the name of corticocoids whereas the hormone produced by the adrenal medulla these are known as emergency hormones and uh, primarily the adrenal cortex hormones are collectively referred with the name of corticocoids and I have already stated in the discussion of pituitary gland. Pituitary gland anterior lobe is responsible for uh, regulating the functioning of adrenal cortex. It stimulates the adrenal cortex and thereafter the adrenal cortex starts producing its own hormones. And uh, primarily the three different categories of the hormones are produced by the adrenal cortex area. One are called as a mineral corticocoids responsible for the mineral balance, particularly of sodium and potassium and concentration. Then uh, sexocorticocoids or gonadocorticocoids which are responsible for uh, secretions of androgens as well as estrogens in the body and thus it is responsible for the development of secondary sex characters in the male as well as the female 
and the third category of corticocoids produced by the adrenal cortex these are known as glucocorticoids which are also known as stress hormones they are produced when the blood glucose level is low and thereby accelerating the process of glucose synthesis in the blood then the most important kind of mineral corticoids produced by the adrenal cortex is known as aldosterone it is responsible for sodium and potassium and balance and uh, thereby also regulating the water balance and hence osmoregulation is the chief function of aldosterone hormone and the gonadocorticoids which, which are prominently produced these are known as androgens and estrogens androgens are responsible for development of male secondary sex characters like beard and mustache and more hairy growth in case of the human males in contrast to the female whereas estrogens they are the female sex hormone they are responsible for development of feminizing features in the female then secretions from the adrenal medulla they are the emergency hormone and uh, the emergency hormone is also known as a 3f hormone that is a hormone of fear flight and fright this hormone is produced when there is emergency situation okay and uh, this hormone is responsible for increasing the blood pressure increasing the heart beat rate and uh, even the respiratory rate and urinary output as well and the emergency hormone is technically referred to the name of adrenaline or epinephrine it elevates the systolic blood pressure increases heart rate cardiac output cardiac output mean amount of blood pumped by the heart per minute speeds up the release of glucose from the liver giving a spurt of energy dilates the bronchial tubes thereby increasing the rate of respiration and uh, it also dilates the pupils to see more clearly it is often used to counteract an allergic reactions as well. and norepinephrine is another hormone which is produced for the adrenal medulla but it is not produced during emergency situations it is produced during normal situations then the another kind of endocrine glands in the human body these are known as gonads and uh, we know that uh, the gonads in the females they are known as ovaries gonads in the male they are known as testes the ovaries they also act as a secondary endocrine glands because their primary function is uh, to produce the egg or ovum the secondary function is to they also help in the production of some hormones responsible for the development of egg as well as a fetus and in case of uh, human male the gonads are referred as the testes and the testes secretes only a single hormone which is called as a testosterone hormone and it is responsible for development of male secondary sex characters i have already stated that is uh, uh, the more hairy growth development of larynx more muscles in the human male they are due to the testosterone hormone placenta also it is a temporary endocrine gland placenta is a connection between the mother body and uh, the developing child and placenta also secretes one of the hormone which is called as placental oxytocin and placental hcg this hcg hormone is also responsible for detection of pregnancy in the urine then gastrointestinal mucosa also acts as a temporary endocrine gland because it also secretes a few hormones which promotes the process of digestion and uh, one another important gland which is present in the chest area that is known as the thymus gland this thymus gland is uh, secreting only a single hormone which is called as alpha thymosin this alpha thymosin hormone is responsible for maturation of t cells t cells are a kind of wbc in other words i want to say thymus gland boost our immunity by regulating the maturity and development of t cells t cells fight against viruses as well as the other pathogens thank you so much if you have any question or doubt then you can post your queries on the email